Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. I hope that you guys are all doing well. So I'm sure you all know what I'm going to be talking about in this video and it is about what happened last night and the announcement that was made regarding your exams. Um, and so I'm speaking particularly to A-level and GCSE students and I couldn't not do a video on this. I had so many messages and so many emails from you guys saying that you were worried and didn't know what to, ha you know, didn't know how to feel and you didn't know what was going to happen next. And honestly, I don't think many people know your teachers don't know, the head teachers don't know. What's been said is all that's out there right now. I'm going to mention firstly what's happened and what's out there. Just in case you don't know, you might not have seen on the news yet or you might not have been given the formal information. So then after that, I'm going to split the video into two different sections for GCSEs and for A-levels and say what the possible options are. No one has any idea what is going on until further details will be given, hopefully this week. Um, but like I said, there's no promises about that. Um, so I'll leave the timestamps for those down below. I know how hard that so many of you have worked this year, not just this year, but think about it. GCSEs are a run up of five years of education. Um, A levels are a run up of seven years of education. Um, for a lot of you, are devastated, and I, I am truly sorry about that. And it's <laughs> we're in a situation right now that nobody really can control and is beyond any of our wildest dreams. I truly feel like I'm going to wake up and this was just a massive <laughs> dream and. <laughs> everything's going to be back to normal. It feels very surreal right now um, to be waking up every single day to some, uh, you know, new news and I hope that you guys are all keeping well. Every, everybody, everybody's in a crazy situation right now um, and it's just something that we could never have predicted and hopefully won't impact you too badly in the future. So the official, I'll be leaving links down below for all the official news websites. Um, so I'm going to be looking firstly at the... So firstly, the Department of Education has released this statement um, and schools will close officially from Monday. So Friday will be the last day. A lot of schools might have closed already, uh, but Friday will be officially the last day of schools being open. Except for children of key workers. Key workers are people who work within the public sector in roles that are vital to the infrastructure of the community. These include teachers, police officers, armed forces, um, NHS workers. So yeah, I mean, if your parent is someone who we really need to be in their job right now helping as much as possible then as a student you would be required um, to come into school um, just so your parent is able to go into work and help out with the situation that we're in at the moment so if you're someone that falls into that category then school will be open for you the risk is minimized because there's a lot less students there's not a thousand students in school there'll be a lot lot less students less interaction and a lot less risk of um, students passing on coronavirus to each other in school. Also, if you are a student that gets free school meals, there's also a scheme that they're going to be announcing soon whereby you can collect vouchers, or I think it'll be sent to your house, um, and you can go and buy some food. Uh, again, like I said, details are not released yet in terms of where you can get food and how much it's going to be, etc. No primary assessments are going to be happening, so if you, um, so no SATs for year six is going to be happening in the summer, and no GCSE or A levels. Now, what they said was, and they kept it quite vague they said no exams in May or June are going to occur they didn't actually say that it wouldn't occur in July or August or September or October they just said May or June that was what was specified May or June it doesn't mean that it's not going to happen at all it just means that it's not happening when it should happen in May or June and what you might find is that a lot of your schools have are still carrying on with your lessons so even if you are year 7, 8, 9, 10 um, or you know year 12s you still have lessons um, that carry on and a lot of your teachers have prepared have taken the past two three weeks going beyond teaching you in the classroom after school on weekends to make sure that they're preparing for if this happened and it has happened you are still able to get an education and you know obviously you don't have exams at the end of it if you're year seven or you're eight or you're nine but it is a lot of time to lose and it will impact you next year if you don't get any educational provision at all so it's nice to know that your teachers have put in that effort to give you some work to do during this time off because really we don't know how long it is going to last for it is indefinite which means that there isn't an end date. It could be till this summer, it could be a month, it could be till the end of the year. We really don't know. No one can say for certain what it will be and how long it will be. And it's a long time to take off 
for your education, which means that when you come back to school, there'll be a lot to catch up on. And to minimize that, your schools are probably going to give you a timetable, have given you online logins. Um, so do try to keep up with them. Of course, you don't have to do a full timetable like you would when you're in school, but definitely try your best to keep up with it. It will make a big difference when you go back next year or whenever we go back. The Ofqal is the Office of Qualifications and Examinations Regulations. So they re regulate all qualifications, assessments and examinations in England. And they released a statement, a very short statement, and it basically says that they're, we're not going to hold exams this summer and in these circumstances, and we're going to be working with the Department of Education to work through the detail of this decision and will provide information as soon as possible. That is literally all they've said, two sentences. They're going to be working through the detail of the decision, which means the decision was made, but the details haven't actually been fully thought out um, and they will provide more information as soon as possible. So really this is the department for where all assessments are you know, figured out and they don't even know. Um, or they're not saying at the moment what, what they're going to be doing. Also a shame that you had to find out like that the way we found out. I, my jaw dropped when I heard it last night and I'm not even sitting exams. So I can imagine how shocking it was for you guys to hear that, especially like I said, you've worked so hard this year. If you're in year 11 or year 13, um, you've worked so, so hard and it'll be a shame if it goes to waste. Um, but like I said, we don't know what's going on at the moment. AQA also said we are working tirelessly and um, you'll still get the qualifications that you deserve. What that means, we're not sure. Then Pearson, so at Excel, so the same thing. We understand that it is has left you guys with a lot of uncertainty and worry. Um, and again, we will let you know as soon as we know. That was That's what at Excel said. OCR said a similar thing. A lot of you are probably thinking, okay, so we don't know but what could happen? So I've written down what some of the possibilities may be. So for GCSEs, the first one is that they might use your predicted grades or your mock exam grades. So a lot of you, if you're in year 11, probably all of you should have done mocks by now after the February holidays. Um, and that was the last exam that you did. So it's possible that they might use that result combined with teacher judgment to um, give you a result. Now, I would probably say that is the least desirable result purely because, and I can say that as, like I said, as a teacher, there is definitely teacher bias that occurs with predicted grades. I'm sure we've all heard of situations where students have been predicted a lower grade and have achieved much higher in the actual exam. And, and you know, that for that person, predicted grades would be complete waste. And on the flip side, um, there may be private schools or other schools where they over predict their students purely to get them into top universities or top colleges and their students haven't actually achieved that grade yet. And I can speak from experience because I was predicted um, I was told actually by my A-level teacher that I wouldn't really get very far. Maybe cooking at home is exactly what he said, his own words. Um, and I ended up getting the top grade in that whole class and I, you know, smashed it. So I am a little bit against predicted grades purely because of that reason. We know that there is definitely race bias, gender bias, um, just teachers not liking students, etc. <laughs> students acting up during the year and then working really hard at the end. Um, it, it, it's just, it's a lot. I, I personally think that it's a big decision to make. I truly believe that predicted grades hold some bias, regardless of whether it's conscious or unconscious, and I'd rather not use them as a marker. Second option is exams to be held a bit later on. So rather than being held in the summer, they'll be held in September or October. But the only problem with that is the fact that we don't even know if we're gonna be okay to go back to school then. And we also don't know what's going to happen between then and now, how are students going to be informed? What if you have summer holiday plans? Not just that, but if they're held in September, then what about all the revision? What about all the studying? What's how, how's that going to happen? Because normally you've got teachers ramming things down your throat until the last day, but then if it's in September and October, it's definitely gonna impact results regardless. So what's going to happen then? So that's another option. Another option is to blanket pass everybody. So just to say, right, this year group, this cohort, <laughs> you've all passed. 
I, I don't I don't know how this is going to work, um, but that's something that a few universities have been doing with their undergrad degrees, just blanket passing students. So that is a possibility, but a lot li less likely, I think. It could give you grade boundaries. It could say that you would have got an eight or nine or a six or seven or a four or five. Um, especially, and I think that would be a little bit more reasonable. So I'm just throwing this out there, but redoing the whole year. Again, not sure how this is gonna work because then what's gonna happen to the year 10s that are coming up? Do they just stay in year 10? I, I mean, like I said, this is me just making complete guesses as to what's gonna happen, um, but it could be a possibility. Now for A-level students, it is very different. Whatever you ended up achieving would be what allowed you or enabled you to go into university or go into the course that you want to go into next. It does hold a lot more weight and um, I do understand your concerns and I, like I said, I do sympathize with you guys. I have had so many messages asking me about what's going to happen um, with everything. Again, similar to GCSE A-levels, you might just be given your predicted grades. Um, I mean, again, I'm not going to say the same thing as I said before, but I'm not a fan of predicted grades simply because of the bias that it does hold in some instances, and I do think it can be very unfair. Um, so I hope not, but we will see. They may just give you unconditional offers for the firm choice that you had, which is good in a way for those that um, are happy with their firm choice. But for those that may not have got into their university or their choice, the degree of choice, you may have wanted to adjust that through adjustments by, you know, doing well in your exams and then getting a higher grade and trying to get into a better course. That is where the big question mark comes into it. And I think, um, like, like I said, I'm not sure what's going to happen with that because, you know, you haven't had the chance to prove that you could have done better. And I think that is where the issue may arise. And one thing that I've been hearing and reading quite a bit about um, is students saying that, yeah, okay, we get a conditional offer, we get an unconditional offer, but we will always know that we didn't achieve that grade. And I completely understand. Like, I know it's so easy to say, oh, that's great, we escaped exams and we got into our university of choice. But I completely understand you're going to be carrying that psychological like awareness that you didn't you know sit those exams you didn't have that moment where you opened your exam results and were super excited and it is a part of in my education that i really enjoyed and was really proud of opening those results and seeing those grades and i don't know okay i really feel sorry for you guys and then the last option is to just do exams later so universities usually um start in october so maybe just doing the exams a bit later and then university might start in january for example that could be an option um and then shortening the first year of next academic year that could be something as well that might work so i hope this video gave you some reassurance and I'm sure we, I mean, we all have questions as there isn't anybody that hasn't, that knows exactly what's going to happen. So please be patient with your teachers, be patient with your um, parents, be patient with everyone that you speak to because nobody knows your teachers are doing their absolute best to figure things out in the current climate. As soon as there's a new update, then I will be doing the same thing, posting a new video on what the latest is and what you know what you can do next. But for now, what I recommend you to do is just take a little break, step back, and just collect your thoughts. Um, do something that you enjoy. Don't go out, <laughs> but do something you enjoy and speak to friends and just just let it all out. Just let it all out. And as soon as we know what's happening next, then we can move on to the next step. Your work, your efforts have not been wasted, I promise you, they haven't been wasted. What you've been learning for the past couple of years are life skills that you will take with you wherever you go in the future. So whether you end up doing the exams or not, you have learned so much and you've grown so much in the past couple of years and you should be proud of yourself for going through something like this and still being you know, sane on the other side. I wish you guys all the best, please stay safe, stay indoors and I'll see you guys in my next video, bye.